What's up, everybody? I'm your host, JT. Back to you guys with another episode of the JT Sports Podcast. Got a very exciting episode. We're going to be discussing what quarterback should the Panthers draft in the upcoming 2023 NFL Draft. Should they pick Bryce Young, CJ Stroud, or gamble for the upside with Will Levis or Anthony Richardson? After seven seasons with America's team, Ezekiel Elliott has been released by the Dallas Cowboys. He's 27 years old. He doesn't have the same explosiveness that he once had when he first came into the league. But I believe in the right situation with the right team, Ezekiel Elliott can still be a productive running back. We're going to talk about what teams should be in the market for his services. What are the best landing spots for Zeke? And Baker Mayfield signed the one-year deal with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Can he beat out Kyle Trask for the starting quarterback job? And if he does, how far can he take the Buccaneers this upcoming season if he gets the starting nod? Before we get into it, if you haven't already, make sure that you check out the JT Sports Podcast. Every video that's uploaded on the channel is available in audio format on all podcasting platforms. Apple, Google, Amazon, Spotify, wherever you get your podcast from, you can find the JT Sports Podcast. If you enjoy this episode, make sure that you like the video, subscribe to the channel, rate us five stars, share this episode on your social media platforms with your friends, family members, and acquaintances. Who should the Carolina Panthers draft that quarterback in the 2023 NFL Draft? Let's just go ahead and take Will Levis off this list. Will Levis has all the physical traits to be one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. He has good size, good athleticism, and a fantastic arm, but he has a lot of red flags. His accuracy and ball placement is really inconsistent. His footwork is sloppy, and he can be really reckless with taking care of the football at times. Imagine the Carolina Panthers trading up for the number one overall pick, giving up DJ Moore, Two second round picks and two first round picks just to draft Will Levis. That would be a slap in the face to Panthers fans across the globe. Let's scratch Will Levis off the list. That leads us down to three quarterbacks. CJ Stroud, Bryce Young, and Anthony Richardson. And out of those three quarterbacks, CJ Stroud is probably the safer option of the three. He has prototypical size. He's 6'2", 214 pounds, so he has the frame to be able to take the big hits in the NFL. He should be able to stay healthy, and this is somebody who should be able to lead your franchise for the next 10 to 15 years. C.J. Stroud has fantastic accuracy in ball placement, good anticipation when it comes to throwing guys open, And he's a dog. You know, I love rooting for players who constantly get counted out, get doubted. Every single week during the regular season for Ohio State, I always heard people saying, man, CJ Stroud, he's too soft for, he just doesn't have that dog in him. And I don't know what the hell Ryan Day told him before the college football semifinal matchup against the Georgia Bulldogs, but CJ Stroud played like a man possessed. I mean... We were knocking C.J. Stroud for his unwillingness to run. And I don't know what happened against Georgia, but the dog just got out of the cage. I mean, this dude was running around, extending plays, throwing on the run, picking up yards with his legs on the ground. I mean, this dude was just an unstoppable force. And if C.J. Stroud plays every game for the Carolina Panthers, the way he did against Georgia, this dude is going to be having a first-class ticket to Canton, Ohio. And that may be a bold statement to make, but if you go back and you watch that final game against Georgia, C.J. Stroud was just a man amongst boys. He probably was the best player on the field, and that's with Marvin Harrison and Jalen Carter both being on the field at the same time. C.J. Stroud was that damn good against Georgia. C.J. Stroud put up a historic performance against Kirby Smart's defense. The only quarterback who had the kind of performance that C.J. Stroud did against Georgia, against a Kirby Smart-led defense, was Joe Burrow. C.J. Stroud has all the tools to be a great quarterback 
for the Carolina Panthers. You don't really have too many red flags. You don't have no off the field concerns. He's pretty good when it comes to going through his progressions. He doesn't make a lot of mistakes with the football. CJ Stroud probably would be the safest option if you're the Carolina Panthers. You don't have to worry about the durability concerns that you have with Bryce Young. And plus, you don't have to worry about making him sit a year or two trying to develop him like you need to do with guys like Will Levis or Anthony Richardson. C.J. Stroud is a day one starter. You draft him, he's going to be able to come in and contribute right away. Then you have Bryce Young. And Bryce Young is my favorite player in this draft class. And I believe that he's the best quarterback prospect since Andrew Luck. You look at the size and you say, JT, no thank you. No way you think Bryce Young is going to be able to to stay around for 10 to 15 years in the NFL. And listen, I do have a lot of concerns about Bryce Young's size. Some people say last season at Bama, he played at 194 pounds. Others may say he played at 186 pounds. He came into the NFL combine at 204. But I'm going to just be honest with you. I don't really care about Bryce Young's size. Because if you go ahead and you watch his tape, You see a damn good football player. You see somebody who truly understands how to play the quarterback position. He knows where all his receivers are at at all times. His football IQ, his awareness is off the charts. It's like this guy just has eyes in the back of his head. He doesn't get phased with pressure in his face. He has really good pocket awareness, something that you don't really see a lot of For guys his size, you look at Kyler Murray, Russell Wilson, these are guys who have to do a lot of damage throwing the football outside of the pocket. But Bryce Young, if he was 6'3 or 6'4, this guy would be labeled as the next can't-miss prospect. He also is like Houdini. He's really hard to bring down. Yeah, he's small, but he's not the easiest guy to bring down. I mean, this guy can wiggle his way out of tackles, wiggle his way out of sacks. He's like Houdini. And when he gets outside the pocket, that's where a lot of magic starts to happen. He also has a good amount of mobility to be able to pick up yards with his legs. Even though you would have loved to see more of that during his time at Alabama. But Bryce Young has all the tools to be a great quarterback in the NFL. And if you're the Carolina Panthers, C.J. Stroud is good. But I think if you were to rank these quarterbacks, it would be Bryce Young 1A and C.J. Stroud 1B. Bryce Young, for the last two seasons that he was starting for Alabama football, you kind of can say that he carried their offense. Normally, Alabama has tons of players on both sides of the football entering the NFL draft. But the only notable player that... Bryce Young was working with on offense that slated to be a top draft pick on the offense side of the football was Jameer Gibbs. And he's either going to be a late first round selection or early second round pick in this year's draft. So Bryce Young wasn't working with a stacked Alabama team like how you're accustomed to seeing out of Alabama quarterbacks in the past. And Nick Saban will probably even tell you that if it wasn't for Bryce Young, Alabama would have lost way more games than what they did last season. This dude, Bryce Young, one thing that stands out when I watch him is that he's always calm and collected. I never see him get rattled playing in some of the toughest, most hostile road environments in all of college football. He's always in control. And not just that, but in big moments of the game when you need him to make big plays, he comes through nine times out of ten. This guy's clutch. This guy's poise. He's a fantastic leader. He's not a big raw, raw guy. He's a little bit similar to CJ Stroud, soft spoken, rather lead by example. But Bryce Young, if he gets drafted by Carolina, I also think just like CJ Stroud, they're both kind of bust proof. It's just that you have the concerns with his durability. But if I was Carolina, I would take Bryce Young. Hell, yeah, he may not be around for 10 to 15 years, but at least when he's on the field for the six or seven that I know that he can stay healthy for, 
he's going to be a damn good quarterback. This dude is like a mix of Russell Wilson and Drew Brees combined. Fantastic accuracy, good ball placement, really good at going through his progressions. He comes from a pro-style offense, so you don't have to worry about how he's going to translate going from college ball to the NFL, at least when it comes to understanding NFL systems and schemes. I love Bryce Young. Yeah, his size scares me a lot. I don't know how he's going to hold up, but all you need to do is make sure that he has a good offensive line, give this dude some good pass protection, and let him cook. And then you have Anthony Richardson. And I already said that I would take Bryce Young over C.J. Stroud and Anthony Richardson. But Anthony Richardson, though, he has a really compelling argument. You may say, well, JT, you just crossed Will Levis off the list right when this segment first started. Yeah, I did. But you see... Will Levis doesn't have the kind of athleticism that Anthony Richardson has. When you watch Anthony Richardson play, there's no way that you can't see Cam Newton. I don't know how you don't see Cam Newton when you watch Anthony Richardson play. It's kind of like you have this evolution. We first started off with the Randall Cunninghams of the world. Then you had your Slash Stewarts. Then Michael Vick came around. Then after Michael Vick, you had Vince Young, then Tim Tebow, then Cam Newton. And then things started getting really scary when Lamar Jackson entered the league. When Lamar Jackson came in the league, we never saw a quarterback with the kind of speed and quickness that Lamar Jackson possessed. And then Lamar Jackson was able to put it all together. Now he's one of the best quarterbacks in the game. And then you have Anthony Richardson. This dude is the definition of of being built in a lab. 6'4", runs 4'4", 3", and has a rifle forearm. I'm sorry, but I definitely could see a way that Anthony Richardson goes number one overall. And yeah, he may not be able to start right away, but you trust Frank Wright with quarterbacks. Frank Wright has a fantastic track record of being able to develop quarterbacks. He was really good with Andrew Luck, even though he didn't really need to do too much work with Andrew Luck. Andrew Luck still had one of the best seasons of his career under Frank Wright. Then you had Jacoby Brissett, who wasn't too bad. He played better than what most people expected him, or he played better than what most people had expected out of him. Then you have Phillip Rivers, who in his final season led you to the postseason, and then after that, you're playing musical chairs. You had Carson Wentz, then Matt Ryan and Sam Ellinger. But Frank Wright has a really good track record of working with quarterbacks. And if there was any head coach in this draft who I would trust to help Anthony Richardson reach his full potential, it would be Frank Wright. This guy has a proven resume of being able to elevate and develop quarterbacks. So I don't see no reason why he wouldn't be able to do the same thing with Anthony Richardson. A lot of people make the draft seem like it's all about the players when it's also about where you go, who you get as your head coach, and if they're able to build a scheme and a team around your strengths. But if I was the Carolina Panthers and I was their general manager, the quarterback that I would pick would be Bryce Young. I love CJ Stroud, but Bryce Young, I just think that he makes you a better team than what C.J. Stroud would make you. Now, both of those guys would make Carolina a better football team today than what they would be yesterday if they were to draft one of those two guys. But I just think that Bryce Young is just a tad bit better than C.J. Stroud with his ability to improvise, throwing on the run. C.J. Stroud, he's not that good when it comes to being able to get outside the pocket and throwing on the run. That's not really a big part of his game. Like Mobility for C.J. Stroud isn't what his game is based on. His game is based on standing inside the pocket, dissecting and picking apart your defense with fantastic accuracy and great ball placement. Now, if he does need to run, he has the ability to do so. He's not a burner. He's not a blazer. He's not Lamar. He's not even Patrick Mahomes, but he does have enough speed that if you give him an open running lane, he can make you pay. I want Bryce Young. This dude is really rare. You don't see the kind of skill set 
out of Bryce Young that you normally see from quarterbacks that have his size and statue. Truly rare. But Bryce Young is the quarterback that I would take if I was a general manager for the Carolina Panthers. But let me know who you guys think the Carolina Panthers should draft at quarterback in the upcoming 2023 NFL Draft. After seven seasons with the Dallas Cowboys, America's team has released running back Ezekiel Elliott. He's 27 years old. He doesn't possess the same explosiveness that he once did when he first entered the league. Over the past two seasons, he's been more of a short yardage back. But I believe if Zeke goes to the right situation with the right team, he has enough juice left in the tank to still be a pretty productive back. He isn't 30 years old, so he hasn't reached that threshold that most running backs get to and they start to fall off and decline in play. He still has about three solid productive years left in him. So what team should sign Ezekiel Elliott. I think the first team that should be on the phone trying to get Ezekiel Elliott on their football squad should be the Philadelphia Eagles. They just lost Miles Sanders in free agency to the Carolina Panthers. Yeah, they signed Rashad Penny, who's pretty nice, but you probably want to pair him up with another running back. You have Ezekiel Elliott, Rashad Penny. I think that's a pretty good one-two punch there. Another team that I think would be a perfect fit for Ezekiel Elliott's services would be the Chicago Bears. David Montgomery is now with the Detroit Lions. You do still have Khalil Herbert. Khalil Herbert probably could either be your lead back or he could be a pretty good option behind Ezekiel Elliott. You got Justin Fields, so when you have that much talent in the backfield, teams are going to have to account for it, regardless of how you may feel about Ezekiel Elliott and his explosiveness. Having a quarterback that is that big of a threat running the football, such as Justin Fields, defenses are always going to key in on that. So that should open up opportunities for Ezekiel Elliott to have some big runs. The Los Angeles Rams, they're a team that kind of should be in the market for running backs. Cam Akers, he didn't really do too much for the majority of last season until the last couple of weeks when things finally started to click. But Cam Akers is just a little bit too inconsistent to trust him as your full-time RB1. So it probably would good. It would be good to have another option alongside of him. Ezekiel Elliott, He'll be kind of cheap. I don't really think he's going to demand a hefty salary or contract from any team around the league. We know that the Rams right now, they're kind of strapped for cash right now. You got Kyron Williams, who's a pretty good pass catching back. But you have Ezekiel Elliott. Then you have Cam Akers as your RB2. I think that can work. There's another team in Los Angeles that needs help at running back. Austin Eckler just recently... Asked for a trade from the Los Angeles Chargers. Contract negotiations between the two parties broke down. He could get traded. And if Austin Eckler ends up getting shipped off elsewhere, the running backs that you currently have on your roster at the moment are Joshua Kelly and Isaiah Spiller. You most definitely could use Ezekiel Elliott if you are the Los Angeles Chargers. And the Chargers have a pretty good team. As a matter of fact, you could say there are a couple of players short of being legitimate Super Bowl contenders. You got Justin Herbert. Your offensive line, when fully healthy, is pretty solid. You got Ezekiel Elliott in the backfield with Joshua Kelly, Isaiah Spiller. He probably ends up becoming your full-time RB1 in that situation. Yeah, he doesn't bring you the pass-catching ability that Austin Eckler has, but at the same time, I think that Ezekiel Elliott with Kellen Moore... The fact that Kellen Moore has been the OC in Dallas for the last couple of seasons. Ezekiel Elliott and him are going to have pretty good familiarity with each other. And oftentimes, when it comes to players going to new teams, they follow former coordinators or guys who served on the coaching staff with teams that they used to play with. Sometimes it's about who you know, not what you know. And Ezekiel Elliott and Kellen Moore, I think they have a pretty good understanding 
of what to expect from each other. So I think that the Los Angeles Chargers could be a pretty good landing spot there. The Buffalo Bills, they've been needing running back help for a while. Devin Singletary, although he wasn't bad, he's a free agent now and you could do better. Now you do have James Cook and Naeem Hines. If you add Ezekiel Elliott to the Buffalo Bills, he definitely is going to be splitting carries. I think James Cook could end up having a breakout year. Really good when it comes to catching the football out of the backfield. He showed a couple of flashes last year, but it just wasn't consistent enough. He didn't really get enough opportunities as you would like to probably be able to access James Cook. But I think with the fact that Devin Singletary is a free agent, Maybe he doesn't come back. He goes elsewhere. You go ahead. You bring in Ezekiel Elliott. And Ezekiel Elliott with the Buffalo Bills, if they can improve their offensive line a little bit, I think that he could be a little bit of the missing piece of what Buffalo needs to get over that Super Bowl hump. People keep asking, why do the Buffalo Bills continue to not be able to make it to the next level, which is being able to make it to the Super Bowl. Well, the fact is, they rely on Josh Allen too much in the run game. And yeah, Devin Singletary isn't bad. I would still take Ezekiel Elliott over, De over Devin Singletary. I think that Ezekiel Elliott just needs to change the senior. I don't think this guy is fried. I don't think he's in a situation like Todd Gurley was when he got released by the Rams and he went to the Falcons. I think that Ezekiel Elliott still has a good amount of juice left in the tank. It was just time for a change. And maybe going to the Buffalo Bills, maybe that would be the right change of scenery for Ezekiel Elliott. You're going to have Josh Allen, just like with Justin Fields and the Chicago Bears, you're going to have to account for that rushing ability. And same thing with Josh Allen. So you go ahead, you want to run read option, that can work. And Ezekiel Elliott is better up the tackles than Devin Singletary, in my opinion. I think that Ezekiel Elliott was a pretty good short yardage back for the Dallas Cowboys. It's just that you didn't have those same amount of explosive plays of 20, 30-plus yards that Ezekiel Elliott used to be able to generate with ease in his first couple of years when he first got drafted by Dallas. Going to the Buffalo Bills, I think, would be a pretty good fit for Ezekiel Elliott. You're going to pair him up with James Cook, Naeem Himes, so he probably won't be your full-time three-down back. you probably have him in on first and second downs. Obviously, you're going to have him in in goal line situations, short yardage situations, but when it comes to pass catching situations and passing downs, you're probably going to split those responsibilities between James Cook and Naeem Himes, but those are the five teams that I think should be in the market for Ezekiel Elliott services. Let me know some teams that you guys think I overlook that should also be in the running for Ezekiel Elliott. If you're listening to this on YouTube, let me know down in the comment section down below. Baker Mayfield has signed a one-year deal worth $8.5 million with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And I'm going to be honest with you guys. I don't really know how this is going to play out. I think that Baker Mayfield could either have a resurgence kind of season similar to what we saw at Geno Smith with the Seattle Seahawks because the Buccaneers roster isn't all that bad. As a matter of fact, it's pretty solid. Yeah, they do have some question marks and concerns at certain positions, but I think the offensive line should be a lot better this season compared to how they performed last year. They did deal with a good amount of injuries on that unit. At wide receiver, you're still going to have Chris Godwin and Mike Evans. At running back, I do have a lot of faith in Rashad White, but if they bring another RB in there, I think that the run game could be a little bit better with better performance out of the offensive line. So from a talent standpoint, Baker Mayfield is going to be throwing to some pretty good receivers, and he is going to be receiving pretty good protection up front. Now, how good is the coaching going to be? I don't really know. I'm not a big fan of Todd Bowles. As a matter of fact, I don't really think that he's going to end up lasting past this year as the Buccaneers head coach. He cleaned house on the offensive staff right after the season ended. He got rid of all of Bruce Arians' guys. He brought in his guys. So we're going to see 
if his decision to clean house was for the better or for the worse. Now, when it comes to Baker Mayfield, being able to beat out Kyle Trask, you probably have a lot of confidence in Baker Mayfield to end up being the starting quarterback come week one for the Bucs. But don't sleep on Kyle Trask, though. He was a second-round pick by the Buccaneers in the 2021 NFL Draft out of the University of Florida. He was a Heisman finalist. He doesn't really offer you anything from a mobility standpoint. This guy is your prototypical old-school traditional pocket passer, but he has a really good arm. He throws a pretty nice deep ball with pretty good touch. I saw a little bit of him in the preseason. Wasn't all that impressed, but you got to understand in the preseason, it's kind of hard to evaluate certain players. So it's going to come down to Baker Mayfield and Kyle Trask. Have a lot of confidence still in Baker Mayfield. When he went to the LA Rams, he showed me that he still has a little something. He showed a little bit of flashes of brilliance at times. And this dude also is a former number one overall pick. So of course, the talent is still there. The question with Baker Mayfield is, can he be mature? Can he prove himself as a true locker room leader? Is he going to be better when it comes to taking care of the football? And then for Todd Bowles, is the coaching just going to be better this season compared to what it was last year? There's a lot of pressure that comes with coaching Tom Brady. There's certain things that you kind of aren't going to be able to do with Tom Brady there. So for Todd Bowles, Maybe him not having Tom Brady at quarterback takes a little bit of stress off his shoulders. But we're going to see how this plays out because I honestly don't know how this is going to play out. Either Baker Mayfield has a resurgent season, maybe not as good as Geno Smith, but maybe he ends up throwing like 22 touchdowns, nine interceptions. I think that could be a pretty solid year for Baker. And if Baker Mayfield ends up getting the start, He probably is the second best quarterback in this division behind Derek Carr, which I know isn't saying too much, but it's something. I mean, you got Desmond Ritter. You're going to have whoever the Carolina Panthers draft. Baker Mayfield, this is his last opportunity to prove himself as a starting quarterback in the NFL. And like I said, I don't really know how this is going to play out. So you guys let me know how you guys think Baker Mayfield is going to fare with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Will he beat out Kyle Trask? Will he be able to potentially lead the Buccaneers to the playoffs? Because that potentially could happen. This division isn't all that tough. And the Buccaneers overall do have a pretty solid roster. Yeah, we don't know how the coaching is going to be and all that. But I think that Baker Mayfield could be in a situation where things end up working out for him. He ends up balling out. Ends up getting a long-term deal. Nothing crazy that's going to pay him anything insane. But if he ends up having a solid year, he could end up remaining the starting quarterback for the Buccaneers for the next couple of years. Or he could end up getting another starting opportunity elsewhere. But also, there's a good chance that this doesn't work out. Maybe he does get beat out by Kyle Trask. And Kyle Trask ends up getting the starting nod week one. And that pretty much would be the end of Baker Mayfield's NFL career when it comes to being a starting quarterback because from that point forward he probably will only be viewed as a backup quarterback in most people's eyes. Baker Mayfield this is his last shot his last opportunity is he going to be able to make the most of it I guess we will see but this is it for this episode of the JT Sports Podcast I appreciate you guys for tuning in make sure that if you haven't already that you like and subscribe to the channel Rate the podcast five stars. We're available on Apple, Spotify, Amazon, Google, wherever you get your podcasts from. You can find the JT Sports Podcast. And I'll see you guys with another episode shortly of the JT Sports Podcast.